by the purest holy oil.
Flex your business with an American Express Business Gold Card. You'll earn four times membership rewards points on your top two eligible spending categories, like transit and electronics, each month on up to 150 k in combined purchases per year. Plus, you can now earn three times membership rewards points on flights and prepaid hotels booked on AmexTravel.com. Terms and points cap apply. Learn more at AmericanExpress.com slash business dash gold. Amex Business Gold, built for business by American Express. You may get a little excited when you shop at Burlington. Burlington saves you up to 60% off other retailers' prices every day. Will it be the low prices or the great brands? You'll love the deals. You'll love Burlington. I told you so. Styles and selections vary by store. Lowe's knows what you need for spring and those outdoor projects. Get the power to do it all at great prices with Craftsman at Lowe's. Right now, get one free select brushless string trimmer or leaf blower when you buy one V20 push mower. That's a $149 value. Visit us in-store or online to save on spring must-haves from Craftsman. Because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid through 522. While supplies last, selection varies by location. These beats are the purest.
try to pure it. Boom, boom. Beats are the purest. Boom, boom.
these beats are the purest, it was And welcome everybody to week five of Aurora Esports. We got another banger match on our hand. We got the Belfast Punger Brigade versus the Farmington Fisherman 2. I'm one of your casters, War. Joining alongside me is Ninja Drew on Prod and Fire, a brand new caster to Aurora Esports on the casting desk. Fire, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. A little nervous, but excited to be here. Hey, nothing to be nervous about on the casting desk, we just yap about these teams and say some random stuff. And if it's wrong, it's wrong. Who cares, you know? But speaking of these teams, w tell me, what are your thoughts on these teams so far? Um, obviously, we're halfway through the regular season, and both these teams have sort of like a mixed bag of results in the same division. Belfast Bunker Brigade currently sit in second within their division, and I believe the Farmington Fishermen are in fifth. So a big win could be disrupt both these two towards middle if Farmington Fisherman win out this match. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think the Belfast Bunger Brigade has been doing really good in these matches. The Fishermen, they're tied actually for fourth and fifth. So a win would push them over, which would be really nice for them. But I mean, we'll see how it goes, right? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And in my opinion, if you're looking at some of the Fisherman's losses, I mean, they lost to the Lumilies in a very, very close series, a 3-2 to two series in Week 2, and then they lost to the Guangdong Magic Tigers, some a team who's, like, undefeated and debatably the best team in the league at the moment. So I wouldn't be super sold on the Fisherman being this, like, bottom three team in their division, especially after they had a recent trade. They actually acquired Booney, for buns bronson and i think that trade is not only a trade that can work good for both teams i think that booney will really gel well into this team especially because of the experience he has specifically with players like Corey, players like kath players like yoda and really just helps synergize the team around him yeah i mean i agree it's a it's a really good team they've had some tough opponents but i think this is going to be a really big battle for who's making the playoffs we have three or three, four, and five here in in this division. They're all really close. Same score, different map differentials. So it'll be really exciting to see how these next couple of weeks shape out. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I know you on the side of the course here. Is, I don't know. Are you guys are you guys play are you guys praying on the Farmington Fisherman downfall to secure yourselves as a three seed, or do you think you can disrupt the Belfast Bunker Brigade and take the two seed? Well, currently we're sitting well. Um, we're we have the best map differential right now on three seed, and I mean it really depends how these matches go. We think that the playoff might come down to our match in week eight, so we'll see how it goes. It'll be nice to you know figure that out when it happens. Yep, and that'd be your match against Farmington Fisherman in week eight. Yeah. So, hey, yep. maybe maybe get a little bit of information, a bit of insight on this cast as well. I mean, I. It was one of those things that I've been, I, I've I've been watching all these streams. Like I'm active in it. I'm like I might as well just cast as well. Yeah, me, you like know, a fun time. Why not? And kind of want to talk about now shifting over to the. Oh, we're actually we're going in, but shifting over to the game. We're gonna be starting out on 
Lijang Tower, and it looks like we are going to get Gardens first. And I think this is going to be a good place for the Belfast Burning Grades to really start their momentum. They've been running dive-heavy comps this entire season. They've been preferring this Doom, Tracer, Sombra, just heavy in-your-face style. Well, on the side of the Fisherman, it's... um. On the side of the fisherman, it is completely different. Um, Ready for battle. Okay, well, completely different comps coming out here. Looks like the fishermen are going to want to be brawling probably in white room, and then we have a dive going on here. I mean, it really depends on if these guys can isolate these DPS players, because, oh, maybe they go back to Winston. Oh, pause. Oh, pause just coming in to ensure we got the right spectator perms coming out. But yeah, I think Boonie on Winston is a, a one of the staple characters, one of the many staple characters for them. Uh, question for me is if the more coordinated dive composition will mesh better with Winston here rather than the Yoda on Hanzo and the... Oh, we're actually going to jump out of map here. For a second so we might get a different starting map and some different starting compositions as well but yeah the thing i was really wondering about though is the synergy between yoda and invictus on the dps and boonie on the tank so I'm, I'm not really sure how well that's gonna play compared to a comp that has a lot of experience and a lot of synergy with each other yeah same thing i mean belfast bunger brigade has looked very comfortable in dive and it's kind of been their bread and butter recently. Um, we'll see how the fishermen are able to contest that. It's going to be interesting for sure. For sure. I do wonder, um, primarily, I think um, we got some spec, uh, we got some, they had to handle the spec perms. So obviously, Centurion has to have the right spec permission on the bench for the fishermen. But currently, Jack is on the bench for the Bunger Brigade because he went to go McDonald go get McDonald's as uh, everybody else was uh, watching the Timberwolves game. Oh, and now he's back. Okay, perfect. So now with Jack back in, they could potentially make some swaps off of what they were doing previously if they wanted. We'll have to see as we are still waiting for the players to be ready, the lobby to be ready. Looks like there are a couple uh, issues with internet ping, stuff like that. So just getting that settled out. Yeah, this has certainly been a quite a delayed match for sure. It's already 940. We were all just watching the Timberwolves game, so. Hey, Timberwolves win though. That's all that matters. Dude, that was, that was big, yeah. Were they playing in the finals? I don't really follow basketball. To be honest, I don't really either. It's just funny. Okay. I I I don't watch usually like the the actual like season games, but playoffs it's like kind of interesting, so I like to to tune in. I'm more of a baseball fan myself. Ooh. Favorite favorite baseball team? Twins. Probably fan the or... one I play for. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I'm a baseball player, so... We, what we position? Play. I'm a first base and pitcher. Oh, nice. That's versatile. It's it's kind of in the genes. Um, I'm tall and left-handed, so... There's not much else to go. And Oh, yeah, left-handed would... Wait. Yeah, left-handed would be better for first base, right? Yeah, typically the right side of the field is left-handed. So your right field and your first base. And then pitcher is always nice just for, like, added mix-up, right? So then you wear the glove on your right hand, right? Yeah. Or am I, am I, yeah. okay, cool. Just making sure. I played baseball when I was younger. It was an experience of all time. I was not that good. What did you then, play? Um, I think I was probably 
best at like either catcher or right field, left field, center field slash combo. I was really good at center field because I could just like run for the ball super fast, but I wasn't really good at like catching the ball was the issue. That's true. Catcher's so, a hard job. Yeah. I'd say that. My uh my outfield I played a game earlier today, my outfielders made three diving catches. Ooh. So that was pretty exciting to watch. I remember when I was in Little League, there was one there was one game where I went in as pitcher because everybody you know, in Little League everybody wants to be pitcher, right? That's of like course, the yeah. star shining position. So the coach is always like, All right, we're gonna give everybody a trial game on pitcher. And my trial game on pitcher I threw only like super super high lobs and I struck out three people in a row. And then and everybody's like hyping me up and I was like, okay, let's go. I'm 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 new pitcher. I'm permanently pitcher now. And then um I did not do as well in the second uh, stop not the, swinging at those. Yeah. They just like stop swinging. There were strikes though. There, there were some strikes through those. Like because I, I mean obviously you're coming in at an arc, so it's harder to hit the strike, but there were some strikes there. But every every ambitious like 10, 11 year old thought they could just bomb it out of the park because there's an easy lob ball. But they can't they can't doubt the war pitching. I know uh Nuttier is on the Belfast Bunger Brigade is also a baseball player. I wonder how many we would have in Aurora. Maybe we can get a get a match going, maybe. Oh, I guarantee you. I guarantee you Yoda would eat up a baseball game. He would like he would go in there and he would like he would he'd hit like 10 home runs I think if you let him cook. He was talking to me um about that on my team. Up. Yeah. We should. I think we could get it. But it's also a question of how many are in Minnesota as well that it's are true. like willing to come out. It's true. But I think Ooh. I think we get the people. Looks like people are starting to trickle back in. Question for the chat: What's more likely, the baseball game for Aurora or Pugs for Aurora? Ooh. The baseball game says the voice in my head. <laughs> yep. Baseball, baseball game definitely is, I think, the leading answer, leading option on all sides of things. All right, chat. We need more talking points. So if you have, if you have anything you want me and Fire to talk about, uh, let us know. Because Corey and Booney apparently both got like DDoSed or something by the Belfast Bunker Brigade, and they uh, can't play or something like that. So if you have anything you want us to talk about, let us know. Ninja Drew has made popcorn before this game, and he has eaten all the popcorn at this point in time. I I wasn't I, okay. I thought I thought during the basketball game that we were watching, I thought I'd have time to go make food, but then Panini was like, "Oh no, it's gonna be over in like ten minutes." Which good prediction, Panini. It was over in like ten minutes, but if I realized there's this much time between the actual game starting, I'd be like downing pasta like bit by bit right now. Yeah, I don't blame you. Definitely be worth chowing down on. Panini asks us to rank our top Booney slash Corey teams. Um, Fire, do you know any Booney slash Corey teams? No. <laughs> okay. I, I was going to say, like... <laughs> Zenith has got to be like, oh, okay. Zenith has got to be top because they won. Original Fisherman were was Booney on the original Fisherman or not? I, I think I think Zenith's got to be one because they won. Guinea Pigs, I. W what team was the Guinea Pigs? I forget. Was I there for that? I don't know. Oh, the one that Booney is on now. Okay. 
I'm not gonna lie. If I if I was to choose, I'd go Zenus one, guinea pigs two, and fishermen three. No offense, but I don't know. The the the, the fishermen, farm to fishermen are. Uh, as according to the standings, not making playoffs at the moment, but they could prove me wrong. They could prove me wrong. You never know. Yeah. We could we could give them the hard torb hard Lucio bot. I mean Actually there'd be a hard tank bot because Boonie's on tank, I think, so you'd need like a hard hard Winston bot? What's the hard tank bot that you usually play with? Maybe a hard Rhine bot. Something along those lines. Harder Reese bot would be good. I think we just have Yak and Invictus duel it out in the Kears for map one. I think that'd be great. Or just have like a big um, TXCXX, I think is the name. <laughs> yeah. But you're only allowed to have the people from your team representing your team, though. So, like, the Farmington Fishermen would only have Yoda, Invictus, Cathak, but they could put in Scent, you know, if they needed him. Where Belfast would have their entire team. That's a powerful TXTXX team, in my opinion. Surely, surely the action will begin any second now, guys. We swear. We promise. Surely Booney won't attempt to join the lobby, then DC from the lobby two seconds later. Surely. Surely we won't, like, go to map five, and then have map five tie, and then go to map six. Can push maps tie? Oh, Booney's here. Push maps can. Unless, go, like, like, unless they're at checkpoints, I think it would be very hard. You just gotta, like, have two Hanzos, like, kill each other on point at the same time. And then have those two be the last two surviving on the team. Boonies in the chat saying, stuck in entering game. The, the cost was not enough. But to be fair, like, they'd still be having these problems, but mid-map in that case. And then we'd be halfway through casting, and it'd be it'd be wraps. We'd lose all our viewership. Here, we can at least hold the viewers hostage. Yeah, there's no escape, guy. If you're watching this stream right now, like, I just want to let you know, you're not allowed to leave until the stream ends. If you do, I don't know. I'll I'll get Panini to find you or something. Panini means business. Panini does mean business. So, Fire, what are your thoughts on the league so far? Having having a good time? Yeah, dude, it's it's been nice. I didn't really, I didn't really know what to expect since I'm kind of a rookie, but it's been a lot of fun. Um, a lot of competitive games that we've been playing recently. And it's it's a it's a nice community. I'm um, getting to meet a lot of people, a lot of good people in the community, so it's nice. That's true. That's true. Very nice community, except for me. I'm I'm the villain. You'll you'll see in you'll see in I think we play each other in like week seven, I believe. Yeah. You'll probably. see week seven. I'm 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 called war for a reason. In the words of Panini, it's winnable. I mean, I think it is winnable. I think most games are winnable. It's true. Hmm. 
I'm going to look to see if I can identify any non-winnable games. Okay, I was trying to identify non-winnable games, and I, 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 I don't know. Like, a lot of these games are going to be, like, pretty close here at the end, in my opinion. Like... They got some like they got some good ones, like the Australian Aardvarks versus the Sleepy Slimes. Like I think that's gonna be a banger. I think that's map five banger right there. That could be a really interesting match. I agree. And then you got Guangdong Magic Tigers versus San Antonio Sinkers Week Six. Another, not only important match but, in my opinion, very impactful match in deciding the overall play-ins and and even the Lumleys versus um sinkers later this week as well as the fishermen are now trying to configure themselves a five person composition without Corey because Corey seems to be struggling to get on, but Booney has made it to the promised land. Hello, Elko. Welcome to the chat. As I said before, if you're just joining us, you can't leave. You're stuck here. We're in it for the long haul. Also, wait, question. Question for Ninja Drew. Even though you can't hear Ninja Drew answer this question, he's going to answer this question anyways. It says drops enabled on Aurora Esports. What are the, what are we, what, what's being dropped? Ninja Drew has no idea what's being dropped, allegedly. It's a Symmetra skin, I think. Conjurer Symmetra skin. Okay. So me personally, I also have the stream up to farm. To farm yeah. The drops to farm for the drops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's why you gotta watch this. You get the you get the Symmetra drops allegedly. If anybody asks, like, and this comes back to us, and you don't get Symmetra drops, like, I don't know, not our fault. But allegedly, Symmetra drops could be given. Yeah, everybody make sure to claim your drops that may or may not be enabled and may or may not be on. Nice. All right. During this time, I'm going to start I'm going to start configuring comp. Yeah, so they could theoretically do Oh, wait, hang on. I should do this on the public sheet. If they do Yoda on tank, they do Scent on DPS, that's too low. Uh, that's like 3.3. .3. If they do Boonie on tank, they do Yoda there. Okay, okay, okay. So a Boonie tank, Invictus DPS, Invictus sent DPS, and Yoda Cath support would be 5.55, which is viable. I'm going to see if I can work out any other comps for the Fisherman so we can get started. See what we can cook here. They wouldn't put Invictus on tank. I think it has to be Boonie on tank then. And then Dota. But if the percent goes on support, it's too high. So you could do Yoda on tank and Boonie on DPS. 
What is Boonie's DPS SR? So it looks like they're agreeing to an SR over the cap just to get the match going. All right. Um never okay if that's over sr i'm fine with it. okay so okay we're, uh, going product, in. Cool. we're going in we're going in everybody yo i don't even know what composition they cooked up but let's tune in to find out we finally got the farmington fisherman versus the belfast bringer brigade and it looks like we're gonna have boonie on tank sent and invictus on dps and yoda and kath on support so may or may not be like yoda's one of Yoda's debut matches this season on support, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah, really interesting idea just to allow them to have a higher SR. I I understand wanting to get the game started, but I wonder if this is going to be detrimental to them. I'm trying to real quick ha check how far over this is because I, I don't know if it's like horribly over. What do you think it's under SR? Yeah, this is this is under SR right now. Yeah, they're 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 one hundred percent under SR right now. Yeah. Okay, so they're good. They're both good. Anyways, as we get into the action here, we see a quick TP on the point from Centurion getting the sim turret set up down on this point. It's gonna be difficult for Yak to really get in and recontest that, but the, on the side of the Belfast Bringer Gate, definitely winning this spam battle as Foos looks to set up towards the back lines. And Cherian looking to set up these defenses backwards to ensure that Foos can't get too much progress to back towards the point. It looks like Invictus is going to be the first one to find the pick, though. That's going to be on to Wiggle Higgle towards the point. Booney doing a great job of forcing this team backwards, and backwards Belfast Bringer Gate will go. They have to wait for Wiggle Higgle to come back, get the TP back in, and get back in this fight. Looks like Yak goes down early here. Yeah, and you losing Yak early is just gonna guarantee more time on the side. You can see the is actually gonna make the decision to swap over to Armatra and not really sure how well that synergizes with the tracer composition. It looks like they're having some indecision exactly which way they want to approach this point. They're gonna decide to hit it through White Room as Foos pressures the back side but they do have to deal with these symmetric turrets down towards the point they are on very difficult angles for yak to clear it's really separating his positioning and forcing booney to go in when booney's just gonna go straight into yak trying to go through him there the mortality field has to be invested by capex the window's gonna go down multiple fire strikes are gonna come through as well but they're not gonna connect to find anything the pulse is gonna connect onto capex though and that's gonna be a massive one Victor's trying to turn it around with the high noon, but Foos is poking that one out. Friend versus friend. It's actually going to be Yak who takes down Booney. Nutty is eventually going to clean up Invictus towards the point, and now it's just going to be whatever they can do to hold on here. Sen's going to be the last to fall. Yeah, this is a really bad fight for the Fisherman to lose here. There are a lot of dangerous ults coming up from the sides. Oh, and they looks like they get boost early. And they're just gonna walk in on this. Oh, and the catch nuttier like too. Insane boop, yeah. Also and, coming out. Yeah, with the beat from Yoda coming in, they can actually push the aggression on this fight. And Vic is absolutely popping off here. Finds Melon as well. And it looks like the Farmington Fishermen are gonna be able to capture this point again. So now we're entering last fight territory for Bunker Brigade. And Bunger Brigade looking incredibly split on this push. They are going to go in with the Katuna Rush Wall from Centurion to try and stabilize those points. Centurion's also extremely high charge, but Booney with Big Shatter finds the support line, catches both Nuttier and Will Higgle. Yak now has to turn it around with the Annihilation onto the point, but Booney's doing a good job of swinging that down, denying any presence on the point, keeping them completely off. And Victus with the zoning dead eye to just keep Boost, his teammate, his friend, away from the point. An attempt at a beat. As Will Higgle and Nuttier come back, but the supports are disconnected from the rest of their team, and they're gonna be quick to fall on the point. As it just touches left for the side of the Belfast Brigade. 
And Farmington Fishermen are going to be able to take that first point. A pretty decisive win from them. It seemed to me that the Belfast Bunger Brigade was just a little bit slow and a little bit indecisive about when they wanted to push, what comps to run. Hopefully they turn it around on this map, though. I mean, you can't really hit the VODs against a team that is, like, new to Form 1 and 2 running something completely, like, unpredicted so, from them. I, I mean, obviously, Bruni on Ryan is something you can easily predict, but you definitely don't expect Yoda on the Lucio, and you don't expect Scent to be, in my opinion, in on this map, especially. So, we'll see what adaptations they can make. It looks like they're trying to go a bit more of a brawl look, TP out, and then Fu's going to be going over onto the Genji. Booney doing his best to hunker down towards the point here. Disrupting whatever pressure and ever presence Yak tries to regain, but both tanks are not the healthiest. Booney's shield is dropped extremely low, and Yak's gonna attempt to go in here with the form. They absolutely suffocate Booney onto the point before the cap even comes in from Farmington Fisherman. Nuttier's looking for these aggressive boops, and he does find it. Nuttier with a potential play of the game moment there. Boop kills onto. Sent and Invictus, so now Sent's gonna opt to swap over onto the May. Like Yoda's getting staggered here. Oh, that's a big stagger from the Belfast Bunger Brigade. Yeah, and now Yoda's gonna come back late into this fight. Eventually gonna be able to regain with his team, but the alt advantage is in favor of Belfast Bunger Brigade. Looking at the overclock coming online soon. Yeah, the ult economy from the Bunger Brigade is looking really good right now. So we're gonna need a pick real soon. Yeah, Booney getting a bit stuck in towards the point. They have to invest multiple ultimates. It's gonna be Cathex with the window to try and prevent any progression, but it's actually gonna be Foos with the deflect on the fire strike of Booney to take himself out. But the mix is there, the quick trade. Foos realized that he needs to build up Dragon Blade, but Invictus with a quick dead eye to Halt that progression. 2v3 down towards the point, but now Booney's eventually back into this fight, forcing a 3v3. Yak realizes he has to use the Annihilation in this fight to keep the team alive, but Booney's gonna pin it down towards the point and actually find that pick. Beat's gonna be invested as well. Bunker Brigade investing every ultimate they can onto this fight, onto keeping their percentage held up. And that's exactly what they're doing, 70% and counting. They almost got it to a last fight position. Foos will be even be able to get a quick contest here to just guarantee a bit more position on the point before he gets eventually, not really staggered out, but caught out. Got a lot of ults from the Belfast Bunger Brigade to lose the fight, and there's a lot of ults coming up here on the other side. We're, we're gonna need a big rush here to hopefully close out this point, but anything can happen, right? I mean, that rush into May Alt, into the Blizzard. The combination is there, but they're actually not going to be able to catch. Actually, they catch Yak behind, but there's no punishment on it just yet. Yak manages to stay alive with his life from the health of both players. Yoda also has to drop the beat into this fight. Then Deadeye used again to just deny Belfast towards the point. That's so many ults. That fight was so costly, and they still haven't even cleaned it up. Yeah, like you said, a lot of ults being used on the sides of the fishermen. Used four just to close that fight out. Now the ult advantage is slowly swaying into the favor of Belfast Bunger Brigade, but an early window is gonna deplete all the ults, and they're gonna invest it all in this fight. Booney tries to find the pin, but both tanks get traded out a bit late on the immortality field there from Cat Fact. But Invictus is actually gonna be the star of this show, finding two picks. Booth is gonna try to make the hero play, but Sent has the cryo freeze to keep himself alive towards the point, and Yoda doing a great job of forcing him back. Now Booney on the recontest. Booth cannot get staggered out here. He has to use the dash to escape from this fight, but doesn't have a dash anymore, and Yoda's chasing that down. Finds the pick. Boost is going to be staggered onto this last fight. It's all on the back of Melon and this overclock. Yeah, there's been a lot of staggers this fight. 
It seems like a lot of the clock is just ticking off because people aren't dying fast enough. Yaz gonna manage to get the touch, but a wall is gonna be there in a critical position. Yaz completely cut off, and the blizzard is gonna be so good. Will Hill doesn't have anything to counter that out. Yak manages to escape with his life for now, but is just back on the side of point as his entire team is just falling apart. He's the last one able to contest, jumping on the point, but Invictus, he has the dead eye. We're messing it towards the point, Booney shielding it off. And that's gonna be all she wrote for the first map. Farmington Fisherman win on an extraordinarily unconventional composition. Yeah, and they're looking great too. Play of the game. Yeah. I think Invictus is a true hero on this map. It felt like his picks were absolutely clinical. Look at this double headshot here. Onto Wiggle and Nodio taking them both down towards the point damage there as well so now I, I, the belfast burning gate are put in in my opinion a very awkward position they have yet to lose a, a match to somebody in their division i believe yes they've yet to lose a match to somebody in their division up until this point so they have to really think through what swaps they want to make but the saving grace here is belfast has lost the control map before and they've gone on to take the series at the end so we'll see what swaps they can really put in on this hybrid map yeah like you said a uh, first map down but game's far from over i think these are both really good teams and i think we could we could see this map going or this match going very far Yes, we could. As the pig's going to come in, it's going to be Hollywood from the side of Belfast Burner Brigade. They are opting to swap Jack in here, I believe, onto the support. And to see exactly what they want to run. On the side of the fishermen, I think they're waiting for to see if Corey comes back. Just to check if... um. If they can get their real team, if they are forced to play with this unconventional comp. But the unconventional comp worked. It's just a question of can they extend it to a more poke style composition that will work better on Hollywood, in my opinion. Hollywood kind of feels like the map that you would be putting Invictus onto sort of like this Ash character. But I know for a fact that, um, I, I don't know this for a fact, but I, I would assume that Kath and Yoda really aren't going to be the two most, two players most fond of going Mercy. So we'll see if that actually gets pocketed or not. Booney can probably look to go over onto the Sigma and Scent does have... A few options in the repertoire he could stick the may he could swap over onto the genji as well to provide a bit little more backline pressure but as we do see Corey is not going to be available so the primitive fishermen are going to stick to their same comp but i don't necessarily think that's a bad thing because they have a lot of options here yeah i mean like you said an ash would look really nice here hollywood is a lot of oppressive high grounds and having high ground contest is one of the most important things so i would have liked to see genji out of those heroes that you mentioned i think sigma is also very good here we might see a hog from boonie and yeah i I kind of like this approach they want to sort of simulate something similar to what they did on the first map Mostly just because, I mean, they they literally only have one map of experience playing this composition. That was the last map they played. So they sort of aren't really anchored into a composition, but they don't really know the win condition, I guess, they want to target here. But we'll see how it goes. Booney now going over onto the Doomfist to Mirror Yak. As Sen asks what Jack is playing. His main. That is true. 
Oh, I don't think Sink can mirror his, though. His standard rind is bread and butter. And I, I, I don't know about this. I mean, it's just a question of will he falter against the tracer, but I mean, he may be he may be showing a lot of presence onto the tracer, but that is kind of justified here in this case. They're able to force out a bit of Fuse's resources on the back line. I think Yoda has to be extraordinarily observant, otherwise something like that's gonna happen. An absolute collapse from the side of the fishermen as Bunger Brigade just send in and they can just really explode through the Rhine Shield in that way with the Echo, with the Tracer. They can put so much pressure and force Booney into such awkward positions. Yeah, this is going to be really hard to push here. When Booney chases the Tracer, he leaves his back line open to the dive of Yak and Foost. And it's it's dangerous. We see Foost is on a flank here as well. Yeah, and a lot of Yoda has to be committed to, first off, brawling in the front line to prevent the Doom Dive, but also preventing the back line pressure. Was actually when Invictus he finds the first pick. Yoda's actually gonna go in and help support a kill onto Yak, but Jack's able to get the res. And looks like Melon now poking down towards the point, doing their best to disrupt it on this point. But once this brawl from the Fisherman gets set up, it's so hard to disrupt. It feels like Booney and Yoda just playing this like hit scan duo to do their best. Melon's actually gonna make the dupe over onto the Ana. Gets the sleep in on Booney, which might be exactly what they're looking for, but gets forced out in the process. Booney with a dead eye from main, seeing exactly what they can find. It's actually Yoda with some impressive aggression down towards the point. Doing their best to disrupt two flyers, even on Brig, is masterfully impressive from him. But eventually gets caught out there from Poos. Punished for a bit of overaggression. Set with a trade down onto Melon. Meter Strike comes out. Nano onto Booney to sort of solidify onto this point. And Booney's very, very close to the Shatter. But is splitting off the point here. Leaving this point at two thirds of the way contested. Eventually manages to swing down Wiggle Hill. But Jack managing to keep himself alive. Keep himself primed on the point. Pushed down at any point in time. The Soul is immaculate there. But Booney does manage to not even catch Boost as some great sustain comes in. That might have been a Suzu on the side of Will Hill that kept them alive. But eventually and finally, Premium Fishermen are going to be able to take this first point. Yeah, I mean, we had our doubts, but the Farmington Fishermen survived that dive like champs. Like, there's a lot of times where it, it's almost surprising to see them coming out alive here. But they always make it out. They always live. And that's why they ultimately won that fight. It, it, it's because you have players like Invictus and, or in my opinion, Yoda, who are just so willing to just go in. You can see that's exactly how they found the pick. They just like go straight into Brawl and Booty's just pinning across this high ground, forcing the team all the way back to spawn. Yoda's in there with the rally as well, just dueling it out, blocking out all aggression. And I don't, it's just been some uncharacteristic aggression in a way that Belfast is just unable to counter. And Yak's punished again. And so is Wiggle. Who needs the... another charge kill? I, I don't understand what's going on. Is this, the, is this the meta Hollywood comp? I don't think so, but maybe. And you can't even say in this case that- oh, oh, Another what? charge kill what? for Booty. What? What? There's spawn. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's one way to get second point. <laughs> I, I just think it's no fear from the Farmington Fishermen right now. I mean, they, they just look unfazed. Booney's even like pressing himself against the opening door saying like, I, I want more in this. And the Belfast Burger Gate are just on staggers. They haven't been able to get a good team fight in a while. Finally finding the Pulse Bomb on Iota though. May kite out some of this aggression. Yak looking to go in, but clearly has to be very afraid of that just situationally, considering the amount of damage that the fishermen can put down. And they've still been holding on to this nano blade. Melon's eventually gonna change that though. Sunday rush in, shot onto Cathect, shutting down the support line. Booney's gonna fall as well. So eventually the presence is gonna get put back in Victus though with another hero play, shutting down boost. I mean, second point for me was the most concerning part running this Rhine comp, but Boone just seemed to charge in and get a pick every fight. 
So now they're on a point where a lot of these, there's a lot of close corners, a lot of corners they can play. And I think the Ryan Comp is actually looking really good here. And if you're the fisherman, you gotta start using your ults now. It's gonna be actually Jack with the Guardian Angel coming in first. And he loves to play this one aggressive. He's gonna help with, out with some of these kills as the DPS from Belfast are gonna clean the rest of it up. Boonie's left on the point. He's completely shut down. So two ultimates on the side of Belfast Burger Grenade and the Frightened Fishermen are just holding on to theirs on this fight. So I want to see them start coming online with a lot of these alts. Yeah, this is great discipline from the fish. They they see the alts. They know that they're, they're it's it's not worth alting this. You already have such a large time bank. And since gonna get the nano blade in. Managed to just find one pick, but it's immediately traded out though. They are gonna get Yak for their troubles though. The three-man hit squad of Yoda, Kath, and Invictus just in the back line of their opponents. Eventually they're gonna get the one trade out. To trace in the back. <laughs> and Jackson the one who's gonna get sent on the back. I mean, you know who wins that one, in my opinion. Jack no Valkyrie to keep himself alive and eventually gonna get deflected in and killed out. So now it's a big stagger and still two major ultimates. Yoda can go in there with the rally. Booney can come in with the shatter. And make some massive plays. They're still waiting on Jack to respawn. So I want to see them push the, push the green rally. And that's exactly what they do. Force out the Suzu. The shatter's going to come in. Only catches Yak. That might be exactly what they need. But actually, it's going to be Melon with the first pick. Finding half first on this left side angle. Yoda's not afraid to invest into a lost fight, though. Invest this rally to see if he can turn it around. Sway the fight back into their favor. A great punch from Yak to shut down Sent, and now you gotta think it's basically over on the point. Might even get a Sagger out onto Yoda. That's a good one, too. Yeah, Melon on, on that off angle is dangerous. There are two picks coming out after using two ults as well, and they're gonna swap to the Lucio here. Honestly, I like this look into the Ryan. I think Ryan with speed, especially Booney Ryan, very scary. Extraordinarily scary. We gotta see how they want to take this fight. They realize this one's gonna be the last one. So maybe trying to build some ultimates up with this. Invictus dropping dangerously close to the dead eye, but not been able to find anything just yet. Sent going up to the high ground, trying to disrupt the positioning. Cathex so deep in, and eventually Foos is gonna find that punishment. Dead eye is gonna be invested towards the point, but Yak's gonna be able to shut that down very quickly. And now it's gonna be Sent and Booney doing their best to contest on the point. But I don't think much is gonna come out with it. Kitsune Rush and Valkyrie both utilized on the point. Overclock to chase down to the spawn doors and Belfast Sprung Grid are going to be able to hold it at the third point. But don't get me wrong, still a lot of maps to cover if they want to take this one home. No fire. If you're if you're if you're Booney, do you stick the Ryan here on defense? That's my question. I was gonna ask you the same question. If if I'm playing tank, I'm probably going Sigma here. But Booney Booney Ryan has been so deadly, and I I might stick with Ryan if I'm playing this, and it looks like he does. It's like, how do they, how do they like contest high ground out of Hollywood with this? I would almost love to see like a sim out from scent just so they have a bit more flexibility in what they're doing. But obviously I can't say anything. The composition that they had definitely worked out. And I think Kath now over onto the Baptiste, it provides them a lot more sustain. They can go in, in the way that I feel like Yoda and Kath are kind of like itching to like, just like key the back line like they they want to like push the aggression on jack and wiggle higgle and i think that's exactly what you need to do against belfast they have such a versatile composition with the tracer with the doom you really need to isolate the supports on their side Enemy here. you do see a very standard composition from belfast burger gate here Booney is starting out on this high ground though. Good position for him, but Yak's gonna go straight into the back line. 
but he keeps getting caught here and with the help of a good fire strike and Vix is just gonna close that one out I'd love to see Belfast really set up for their dives a bit more but this one was value as they did trade out Capex so a lot of healing really shut down and Yoda's gonna fall as well leaving the farming fisherman without supports and maybe better for them just to run back here yeah, Foose was just peppering both supports in, that, in the back line after Yak engaged. And it, lo it looked really hard to lift that. And Foose is putting on a performance, at least in this half. Yeah, closest one to his ultimate of the Pulse Bomb. We'll see if there's a contest that can come through, but Yak with the amazing punch to deny Booney. And they're actually going to press forward onto this one, but I don't know if you want to brawl against Booney in a room this big, in a place this powerful. But they are going to manage to make it work. They find Booney as well as both supports. And Jack's going to be able to catch the res onto Foos, so... Some good aggression coming through. Set now trying to duel out against Yak. Down towards the point, but just managed to escape out with his life. And now Booney finally making the swap over onto the D.Va. I do like this a bit better, but I wonder how it synergizes with Invictus on the casting. I'd love to see that swap over onto Tracer to do a better job of just marking the back line. Yeah, it seems like the, the Bunger Brigade is taking taking this high ground and saying that it's theirs. And they're and they're fighting tooth and nail to keep this keep these guys from, you know, keeping this high ground. And Yak comes in with a giant punch. And a meteor strike to follow as well. But it's going to be a dead eye. And Yak doesn't have any really utility to disrupt this one. So he's going to maybe catch a bit Heart's of punch. still maybe. moving. It is. And Booney's finally forced to jump down to contest that. Capex going to invent the Kitsune rush right on top of the cart. Yoda's in there extraordinarily deep as Booney's just doing their best to mitigate any of the damage. Now Belfast is forced to the backside of point, but you gotta keep marking this if you're the Farmington Fisherman, and it's gonna be a great pulse from Foos. And again, it's Foos heroics that really disrupt that fight. Jack as well coming out with the with the Valk and the Glock, and taking matters into his own hands. I mean that that's Jack on Mercy. Uh, that's the expectation value. If he doesn't come up with three, I'm disappointed. In my opinion. But I think the real disappointment is setting in for the Farmington Fisherman here. They have a large task ahead of them, but they do have the alt bank for it. A bomb, a uh, blade on the side of Centurion. So a lot of pressure that they can disrupt. They just need to find their way onto the cart and prevent any more progress. Dax trying to duel up onto this high ground. This boost is on the low ground, poking out, poking down but still unable to find really anything towards this point. As Yak now jumping back, jumping around, seeing what they can find. It feels like the progression is really halted, but Yak's doing a good job of jumping up to this high ground, forcing Invictus and Capex onto the awkward position actually taking the life of Invictus in this fight. Multiple ultimates are going to be invested though. It's going to be a beaten blade for the side of the fisherman. And they do melon with the overclock. Disrupting, disrupting Shaw manages to catch out. Melon with the second one as well. So there's a cart goes closer and closer. They're not afraid to invest ultimates. Meteor Strike coming down onto Invictus. Three on cart and now it's on to the heroics of Booney to touch. Oh. But the bomb is not going to be one to touch. Belfast managed to take that one home. Yeah, that that's a rough one because Centurion is also so close to point as well. And that could definitely have turned... Uh, it, the fight could have turned if uh, they would have touched there, but... But still a oh, very, very close series. Obviously, that was the map choice of Belfast Bunger Brigade. So we'll have to see what swaps, I mean, the Farmington Fishermen want to make here. And if they can even get Corey back into their lineup. But I believe we're going to, if we're able to, head into a short break here. So we will be right back with some more Rory Sports action.
beats are the purest. Really. And welcome back, everybody, to the Farmington Fisherman versus the Belfast Bunger Brigade. Currently, we've had a very interesting match. It got delayed about 45 minutes by the Timberwolves. Congratulations to the Timberwolves on their win. They're definitely going to see this at some point in time and thank me back. But then we got into the real action, and this action is intense. Farmington Fisherman down Corey managed to sneak out map one from the Belfast Brunger Brigade and Belfast Brunger Brigade had a quick answer onto Hollywood for the second map. So currently the series is tied up one to one between these teams. And now Farmington Fisherman, they got Corey back. They're able to run whatever composition they want. Belfast Brunger Brigade, they got whatever composition they want as well. So I think this Surabasa awesome map is going to be a real decider. Yeah, I guess it seems like the alt account was the the fix for it. Yeah, Corey I, I is now Milo, flexed. <laughs> I see Milo in chat talking about the Wolves game. We we did indeed do a full. Everyone agreed that we were gonna wait for the game to end before we started. We all hopped in Ringer chat and watched the end of the game together. So it was a good time, and now and now we're here. Me and Aura here watching another match. Which is shaping out to be pretty good, one and one. Yeah, and this match, in my opinion, is looking as close as the Wolves game if we're talking just overall comparisons. I mean, currently a 1 1 series, but looking fairly dominant on the side of the Farmington Fishermen on their map, looking fairly dominant on the side of the Belfast Brunner Brigade on Hollywood as well. So we'll have to see what the composition is. Booney. Toying with a Mauga, but no, he, he can't go Mauga. He's got to be honorable. He's got to roll out on this Reinhardt. I mean, yeah, the Reinhardt was so good. I mean, even on Hollywood, which is, you know, not as typical Rhine map, but he plays it like no other, and I'm excited to see what, what he comes up with today, what he's cooking. And he definitely is cooking, but it's actually going to be Belfast Brunger Brigade who get the first cook. They have a lot of presence towards point. First thing, Booney to be the one to contest inwards onto the point. Melon's going to find the initial pick as Booney tries to catch out the Tracer, but unable to find anything down towards the point. Now it's going to be Yak pushing the aggression onto the back line. Manages to catch both supports again on the side of the Farmington Fisherman. And Belfast looking to take that first cap quickly. Yeah, it seems like the second Booney walked in, the the die was on and suddenly everything just blew up in the back line which they might have to play a little bit tighter if they want to keep this map going 
Yeah, they sort of have to with this composition. It's such a heavy brawl. It's so resource-based. It's like if, if Boonie goes in, everybody sort of has to follow. And doing a nice little fake out towards the side. Trying to poke him proud on the right side, but actually opting to rotate around to the left side of Belfast's point. So now, Boonie able to get on to point, and this is where he can look to strive, play around this pillar towards the middle, as Invictus almost nearly finding the picks down onto the point, but it's gonna be a great power punch on the side oh of Gak. That disrupts Boonie's positioning, takes out the team, leaving just Squishy's left. Corey has to come in with that Suzu to try and cleanse out the negative effects, but it's not gonna be enough as Belfast looking primed to take this first point. Yeah, I know there's been all of there well, as Boonie moves onto the ram, but there's been a lot of Boonie glaze from both me and you, but <laughs> Yak has also been putting up a very good performance. This Doomfist is looking really clean. Yeah, Yak's been looking so, so solid. It feels like they've started to punish on towards the point. And now looking at this fight that's happening, I like Yoda's decision to sort of back up here, not getting a little bit overzealous, waiting for the full team for the recon test. And now it's gonna be over onto the Reinhardt. Corey dropping down because Tornado Rush, but counted out by the beat from Nuttier. Even now on towards the point. Booney definitely not one to give it up. Kath is gonna drop his beat as well onto the point. Multiple ults online. I'm looking at Yoda and the, and the DPS for the side of Belfast. Maybe turn this fight around, but looks like Farming the Fishermen are gonna get the picks first. Nuttier left, staggered onto the point. Eventually, he's going to get cleaned up as well. As Farmington Fisherman take control for the first time with Boonie on the ram. Yeah, this ram comp is really interesting. They're running more of a dive back line, it seems, with Boonie on ram. I'm wondering if Boonie is just going to attempt to dive with, with them or if he's supposed to just like hold the, hold the point. Oh, and Yak's like an absolutely pick. clinical. Finding that first pick. We'll see if the Farmington Fishermen want to fight this one out. Or they're just fine giving up the space. Looks like Yoda's going to go in with the play, trying to turn this one around. But it might be too little too late as Wizzle Higgle gets a clean Kisuna headshot onto him, taking him out of this fight. But yeah, you talk about the composition that Farmington Fishermen are running. It feels like Boonie is a bit disjointed here, but obviously so close to the Annihilation. Can't give this up yet. Yeah, and, and Yak is just punishing so hard. He's, with, with him and Foost in the back line, it's, it's, it's hard to keep Boonie up at the same time, right? Very hard, but I do like him to swap over onto the Tracer, able to mark out his collegiate teammate in Foost. That, that duel is gone, gone pretty even. Both players now sitting on their Pulse Bomb as well. Is that going to be Melon to strike first with the Overclock on towards the point, backing up Staying away from this form from Booney. And Yak's now looking to separate onto the back line. Punches into the point and Meteor Strike down onto Corey. Managing to catch multiple players. It's only going to be Foos traded out and no flip of the point. Belfast is there to hold on, get 80%, and they will be able to clean up this second point, barring and Yoda no heroics. Here, just so there's no, no chance of touching. But the good news about this is Looks like that Farmington Fisherman may be able to Contest towards this point First Seems like they have some sort of priority in this But Yak's gonna look to Take the fight straight to them here Diving into the back line and This point's so dangerous especially when you have The Doomfist and Lucio's Everybody looking to challenge with these boops. Invictus has managed to find Nuttier. I love the focus swap onto the support of the Belfast Premier Brigade, but yeah, catching Yoda as well. Corey stabilizing towards the point with the rest of his team. But may be a backup or a bit of a retreat from the fat side of Belfast. Yeah, this is an even fight right now, but I'm expecting to see a lot of ults come out here. As we see Rush already. Yeah, the rush can find a lot of value. Pulse used as well, but it's gonna miss on the side of Invictus. But Yoda's gonna manage to clean up Melon, giving Fisherman another advantage that they can surely use and they can surely push. I love the decision to push into the back line, take a bit of space, but I kind of wish they would commit a bit more here because 
when they're down one player, I mean, that seems like the perfect time to push in. Yeah, it seems like a lot of the time uh, there, there's this there's this issue with having dive DPS and the brawl tank where Booney wants to get in and he wants to fight but the other DPS want to take have open space right. and this fight Booney's actually going to get wow. in he's going to fight yeah. for his life Annihilation the beat from Nutty is a little bit too late to save the rest of the team but so many ults invested down toward, on towards this point but it's actually going to be Melon with some crazy heroics on the outside top of point trying to shut down the rest of the team in Belfast, they only need one more point, but Invictus is doing his darndest. Now in a duel on towards the point. Melon still not disrupted on this dominant position, but not able to find all that much value. Eventually has to slide forth towards the point just for the contest. Foos now back on as well, but Invictus doing a great job of shutting that one down. And yeah, how many more contests can come in? I don't think that many. Eventually, they are going to decide to give it up. Yoda's still fighting for this one, though. Kind of wants in. Yeah, and they, I mean, the ult economy here for the fishermen is still looking really good, even after just capping out. With all those staggers, it seems like they got a lot of ult charge off of this. And we should hopefully see an early rush coming in here. Hopefully they know that full support ult's been used for the other side. Yeah, if you can rush early here, you can get one pick. But speaking of one pick, sometimes all you need is Yoda. Will Hill is going to manage to trade that one out, though. So, an even fight. This you means ultimates must be invested. Oh, my gosh. Melon, I think that's the second shutdown we see onto Yoda post-blade. Giving Belfast the advantage towards the point. Corey's going to invest. So is Melon. Overclock versus Katsune Rush. Looks like Overclock's going to come up big this time. And Vic is going to throw in the Pulse Bomb as well. But it might be into a losing fight. As Belfast is looking to clean up onto this point. Just Invictus dancing. Weaving, dodging back and forth. Capex there for the contest as well. But into the four players of Belfast, it's not going to be enough. Yeah, the Bunger Brigade did a great job of, like, negating all these ultimates coming out from the Fishermen. And now they're looking at a really good spot here. Yeah, there's such a big ult advantage here. Foost even setting up for this Pulse Bomb here. A bit of early progression could shut down a lot of the progress. If, you, if you're the farming and fisherman, you kind of have to go fast here. You want to get two fights in, but Yak may not give him the chance. Punch down on towards the point. Catholic is looking extraordinarily low as Yak is just hunting it down. But as Invictus, with even more heroics, manages to catch, catch Foost after Foost throws down that pulse bomb. And now it looks like for the side of farming and fisherman, this is going to be their last fight. With so many alts on the side of the Belfast Burning Brigade, Beat and Katuna Rush both invested from Nutty and Wiggle Higgle. No picks found just yet as Capex invested in the beat of their own. But Booney finally gets that Annihilation online, but has to keep his life on the point. Has to stay alive. Melon jumps out towards the outside of point. Yak looking for a bit of disruption onto this point as well. Annihilation is kept healthy on the point, forcing the players off, getting the AoE that they need to disrupt. And Yoda finally finding Melon. Might be the exact answer they need. The bomb comes in. Pulse bomb from Yoda. Or Invictus, actually. But that's not going to be able to find anything. Nutty are playing for his life. The Booney. The quick pick. And that's multiple picks. Yes. Both supports taken out now for the Belfast Burner Gate. Forcing the reset. Yeah. And they capped. And they're already at 40% after the end of that fight. Well, that fight dragged out for so long post cap. And now they're actually looking pretty good here. There's still a lot of ults coming out from the Bunger Brigade, though. Yeah, and you've got to think with three ultimates now coming online, the DPS and support ults for the Bunger Brigade, they're going to want to invest. It's all going to be on the back of a big pick, and Melon's the one to call for if you're asking for that. It's now Yoda with the blade versus Melon with the overclock. And Melon's looked good in these situations often. It's actually many Yak that finds that trade, finds that pick out. Two members left. Four Farmington Fishermen, they aren't even going to be able to contest this. They aren't even going to be able to touch this as Belfast clean up towards the point and take a two to one lead over the Farmington Fishermen. Yeah, this is this Doom comp is looking is looking really good from Belfast Bunger Brigade. As we see Yak getting play of the game here. Meteor Strike. Yeah, and that is their bread and butter. That is what they are good at. That is what they have practiced playing. The fact they can 
run this comp so proficiently with, I mean, not only like this composition, but even put Jack in there for the integration and it works. It's going to be a very tall task for the Farm and Fisherman to look to disrupt this one. Yeah, I mean, and now they have this map choice here of, you know, Dorado, Junkertown, Rialto, or Root. I mean, what are you thinking here? What do you think is their best map against this, against this Doom comp? I mean, I think it's a question of, on this map, or, I mean, I assume you're keeping Booney in on tank, but you also have the option to throw Yoda in onto tank. I know Yoda has a bit wider hero pool and a hero pool that can dive in to support a bit more. So first I'll answer that question. Obviously you need to put Scent in as well, and that's gonna be an integration onto the DPS role. So you have to have somebody else come out. So I could see a complete composition switch up. Now on the side of what map you wanna pick, you want to go something that does not favor Doomfist, in my opinion, or does not favor Tracer. Like you need to choose one of those, choose one of those ones and go against it. And it looks like the map pick is going to be in, it's going to be on Rialto. Yeah, Rialto, it's an interesting pick because I mean, these four, you're either playing into the dive or you're playing a more poke style. And they chose the poke, obviously, between Junkertown and Rialto. I guess they chose Rialto. Um, this is going to be interesting to see. I'm wondering how the Rhine is going to work into this if Booney decides to stick on it or if he decides that maybe it's time to swap it up. I realize they don't need to swap Scent in here because he played the first two maps. But yeah, so they can run this exact same comp and that looks like exactly what they're going to do. They're going to keep Booney on the tank. They're going to keep the same core that they had. But the Belfast Brunger Gate do have to put it in Jack characteristic mercy player yeah as they go to rialto i'm wondering if they're gonna be leaning into a mercy pocketed hit scan possibly i know i know melon has been absolutely lethal on the sojourn today yeah melon has been incredible i mean the it feels like it's just like the denial it, it feels like every time that the farmington fishermen have something going for them melon's just there with a quick headshot to just completely disrupt that so i, I mean yeah it makes sense why they want to keep in this melon foose dps line and yak over onto the tank i wouldn't be surprised if they just force the same thing over and over again because i mean if it ain't broke don't fix it you know yeah, and a little bit of insider intel on Yak. You know that, I don't know if you've seen in the chat, but he's been playing on a laptop. Oh, um, actually? Yeah. That's insane. He's not on a laptop today, but for the last, like, week or two, he's been kind of MIA at his home setup. And he hasn't really been playing a whole lot of, you know, competitive Overwatch. So this is a nice uh, awakening to come back to right yeah big return for him and the rest of the team as we do get to see both compositions here it looks like yak's gonna be going over onto the sigma i sort of like that as a predictive counter to invictus who you're gonna be really expecting to be on either a widow or an ash here it looks like it's gonna be starting on the widow but i wouldn't be surprised if that switches over in a second Foos going pocketed on Jack, though. I mean, I've talked to Jack a bit about this. He feels so good when pocketing any of the DPS on the Belfast Brunger Gage. So I would not be surprised if we see a lot of value coming out from this Echo, even into Yoda. And Booney's actually looking to instantly swap off here. Like, he, he doesn't want to go Roadhog. He, I think he expected the Doomfist. So now they're going to look for a completely different approach. Oh, As Invictus, that, that's a massive pick. That, that is the pick you want to find first. I think that was out of the sky, too. And now Booney's allowed to contain so much space, but it's a good nade on the back of Cory that looks to really press this aggression here. Cory yeah. with a, also a pick onto a boost. 
Boost goes down because as Yak is holding the front line, Wiggle has to heal him, and since Jack died early, there's there's not much to do there. Boost is still trying to to live here in the corner. And Invictus just snipes him again. So this widow is deadly. Oh my god, Invictus. Yo, some, somebody, somebody catch this Invictus POV real quick because he is popping today. He showed up and he showed up to play. Hitting shot after shot after shot. Almost has his ultimate online. And with Boost swapping over onto the Sombra, if he pop those sights, I mean, it's a quick realization from Invictus about exactly what's happening. But Boost actually looking to set up onto Invictus, catches the hack, Cat quickly there to get the healers off. But it's a question of can they sustain towards the point? Yak with a good rock, countering that out. Cat is gonna try to look for the res onto Yoda, but not gonna be able to find it just yet. And Yak and the rest of Belfast doing a great job of finally stifling this aggression. Yeah, and I mean, as you can see, there are a lot of ults coming out from the fishermen here. I think if they, I mean, they started that fight out at 80%, if they maybe took that a little bit slower, they might have capped that out. It would just win with ult advantage there. And we see sights coming out here. Yeah, no, Hopefully just to gonna... get the Sombra out of the way, right? Yeah, it's so, it's so deadly against the Sombra. It allows them to just push up without fear. And... Sends a little bit of fear into Belfast Brungerge's hearts. I mean, they can't peek into Invictus, especially when he's hitting shots like that. But eventually, sights are going to go down. Foost is going to be able to detect that instantly. Koi's pushed way up. And I know Foost is looking for this punishment, but it's a 2-2 split. Really forcing Foost to engage on either Invictus or Kath. Or Cory or Yoda. But I'm going to decide not to do either. Yak's going to come in with his ultimate. Invictus is going to be the first one to find the pick, though. Jack's going to go in with the Valkyrie, going extraordinarily aggressive with that, but manages to catch the res. In the meantime, though, Riddle, Riddle goes down. Foose gets caught as well by Invictus. Melon has to invest onto the point, force the team back, and Koi's in such an awkward position, barely escapes there with his life. Melon finds Booney, and this is now looking holdable for the side of Belfast. With Yak now, with a lot of stability on the point, Invictus gets traded out. But Wiggle's finding more trades, and now just Booney. A bit of a aggressive EMP there. Only on one player, but lets them win the fight. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's 30 seconds left. These, these staggers are gonna really make or break this fight here. It's, it looks like they might not even have a full regroup. Yeah, and swaps I mean, coming out here as they go to Ryan and May. I I kind of like this counter swap, but it's a question of is it too little, too late? But maybe not, says Invictus. Evil can't hide. <laughs> that question mark in chat, huh? <laughs> Invictus toxic, but dropping down the sights as well. And Yak in this close quarters situation sort of has to respect oh Booney's positioning. On a great nade here, too. Oh yeah, and makes so so proficient here. And even though Yak just managed to find one, I mean, Invictus is just cutting off basically all the sight lines. That's a great angle from Invictus there. It, it prevents them from playing on the entirety of bridge here, and they just have to run into the Rhine Maycom. You can already see some swaps coming through. Foos wants to go over onto something maybe a bit more sustainable against the Rhine. So swapping onto the Tracer. Like Jack is he's getting staggered for. here in the back too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, does Jack have any way out here? I mean, he could Valk out. I think he's just going to Valk into this next fight probably. Jack's but... just in jail here in the back. What is he? What is he? Oh, he's just chilling out there. Yeah, I think he needed to die, but... Now, I mean, I okay. Right. I think he might Valk in. I, I think, I think, honestly, Jack might just Valk onto Invictus here. Oh, there he goes. Valk. Yep, there he goes. He's gonna get punished on the way out. No, he does Ooh. not. Manages to catch back with his team. And now with the Valk advantage, Melon manages to catch Invictus in that fight. Pulse Bomb is invested as well. Catches Yoda. So, now two players down. Even though Booney finds Melon, it's already a one fight for Belfast Brunger Brigade. Booney's just gonna pin off. Little... Attempt to jump into the water there from him. Yeah, I, I don't. I think there you should probably chase out that mercy. That uh, mercy ended up being the 
the, the change, the jack was the whole... I mean, that's the big reason they won that, right? Yeah, had the Valkyrie. Was able to put down so much pressure. Ooh. The cap actually yeah, catches. Yeah. yeah. Kind of a deadly position, but Yoda's also overextended as well. This is a little bit more detrimental for Yak though, because Boonie's able to put down so much pressure. And it's that situation again. Five ults on the side of the fishermen. They really have their choice of what to use, but they're not gonna have an alt rotation going into the future. They sort of just have to dump a lot all in one fight. And Yak's still terrorizing the back line. Millen just managed to pick up a quick kill. And I'm wondering, can any of these ults even come out? Yoda trying to make a hero play with the Blizzard. They do manage to catch some trades onto the point. Now Yoda forced to use his cryo. The pulse comes in, it's ma masterfully timed from boost there. Cat gets traded out as well. A shadow comes in from Boonie, but it's just too little too late. And I feel like they just shouldn't have held onto their ults for that long. They had five going into the last fight and they weren't even able to get the impact of two. Yeah, I think you're right as well. I mean, they have. <laughs> no, you're in chat. They have. Um, they had a lot of ults there, and I understand wanting to, to hopefully hold off on some of those. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you got to win the fight, right? Yeah. So we'll have to see what Booney opts to play here on the defensive side, but because I don't know. I feel like the Rhine just isn't sustainable when you have a composition that you know, like, can beat that out. So, still a question mark on the board here as a lot of decisions. Oh. And it's going to be Arissa. What are your What are your thoughts on that? Honestly, I don't. I don't mind the Arissa. Uh, even with the patch, she can be. She can be good at times. But I think the biggest thing is that. Boonie, Boonie can get caught out on other tanks a lot, a lot harder. On, on, Orisa, you you live a lot better, and especially when Invictus is just getting dove by Sombra, which I think they're predicting, a lot more resources have to go into keeping these DPS alive. So I think this added survivability, also into the Doomfist, I mean it it works pretty well as well. I wish they see a Widow coming from Melon instead. And it's gonna be boost over onto the Sombra. Looking for that pick, but it's probably gonna be a bit harder to find, especially when you have uh, Corey on the BAP and the Brig on the other side of things. But yeah, oh, definitely not oh, afraid to shit. pressure down, down this aggression. And he's gonna manage to find the first pick onto Cathex. And still not low in this fight at all. So Yodas has to expend a lot of resources on really marking him this position. And they realize boost on the Sombra in the back line as well. Never count that man out as they just dismantle the support line of the fishermen. Yeah, I mean this is this is really hard here because they're coming in from all different angles. Foost coming in from behind, you have Yak coming in from inside the room to get the kill on the brig. And it seems like they're just getting squished here. Saving graces, there should be one more contestation. Not before Foost sneaks into the back line of the Farmington Fisherman, so it's gonna be a scrappy one at that. Cathex definitely has to fear for his life. Hold his Suzu for the right time in this fight. And the hack's gonna come through onto him. And they're just gonna catch that. Oh. So great, good focus fire from Melon on the opposite side of things. So really poke that one out. And Vixus does get the trade down onto point. With Bruni able to brawl in this room, they've set up Yoda and Corey into such powerful positions. But still a player advantage on the side of Belfast Brunner Brigade. As Melon gets the trade down on to the team. But Cap actually gonna decide to come back on the Mercy here. Maybe a little bit less sustained against the back line, but able to keep the team up, get the res back online. Jack has invested the Velk onto point. Looking to contest it, looking down, put down a lot of pressure. Video strike comes in as well. Corey the quick dodge one onto that one. Multiple support alts being dropped uh, down into this fight. But it's gonna be the window from Corey that really stands true, enabling the picks down onto point. But Boost is gonna manage to trade out Invictus. And the EMP is gonna cancel EMP out. Stop the res. Yeah, that's massive. It also catches multiple members here. Yoda 
Now with the dead eye on the back side of point, forcing the awkward position from Yak and the rest of Belfast Burger Brigade. And finally, Parmentier Fisherman to all back into this fight, but so are the Belfast Burger Brigade. As Yak is doing a great job of just channeling this high ground. Booney's zoning off the low ground though. They keep trying to punch Booney off this point, and he just does not want to give this space up on the Orisa. Melon though finally capitalizing on multiple picks here. Invictus falls, Capex falls. But Yoda's still trying to keep this a winnable fight. And they're just doing such a good job. It feels like Koi has not been able to be forced out of this position. But Will Hill has something to say about that. It's just going to be Booney on the point. But Invictus is now back with Overclock. Can he make a hero play in the final moment of this point? If he does, it's going to be a massive one. But no, eventually oh, even wow. he is going to fall. That was a really long fight. I'm not going to lie. And now, Farmington has to wait for the response to come in. A lot of alts been used at the start of that fight on one side. As it's actually gonna be Yoda getting hacked out in the back line. Foos finds an early pick there. And that's gonna be so deadly. Does Capex wanna come back? Go for the res. It looks like he does. Realizes they need to take this fight as the overtime music starts playing. But the ultimates are coming online first for Belfast Prime Brigade. They have three, four built up. Foos can invest the EMP here if they want, but no, quickly traded out there by Yoda. Will Higgle with another quick pick there on the cat fact. So now it's looking like a fairly even fight. Jack with the Valkyrie. Yoda's trying to save this one down, but it's a meteor strike from Yak that may steal the deal, may cancel everything out. EMP, dead eye, but it's not gonna matter. Belfast taking this one home. Three, two, one. Yeah, I mean, the score doesn't really do it justice, though. These fights have been so close, especially on this Rialto map. I mean, though those fights were... They went on for a while, and it seemed like I'm rooting for a different team every couple seconds. Yeah, both teams definitely showing a lot of promise throughout this map. I think it was definitely a tall task for the... Prime to Fisherman to overcome one Cory not being there and two this team, but I mean it seemed like they did have a lot of good ideas and a lot of good plans on this map, but that is for another discussion and our discussion now switches to the match MVP of the Belfast Bunger Brigade. Yeah. This is hard here because there was a lot of people came and a lot of people performed today. Um but I mean, I, I'm going to have to go with Yak, I think. I think Yak's Doomfist was it, it was... it was inspirational, to say the least, today. Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, all the players on the Belfast... Oh, we can't select him for MVP. From we can't? Huh? He, that's... Wait, Yak can't? Audio? Oh, he has no... Oh. Well... GL... Well, um, I, I was about to, I was about to hype up... My boy, Yak, but I guess not. Can we select anyone else? <laughs> um. Anyways, so obviously a well played match from all the members of the Belfast Brigade. <laughs> Nutty, Nuttier, and Jack looking so proficient on their respective roles. Will Higgle obviously coming in with some massive picks when I, in my opinion, least expected it on the Kiriko as well. And then Foost and Melon would be uh, my two second runners. We can pick him, but no interview. I want an interview. Do you want an interview, Fire? I, I would like I'll, an interview. Yeah, let's get, let's get an interview. So Yak will be our pick. Who, who, who do we want to talk to most on that team? Oh my gosh. Well, who's our um, runner up, I guess? I think, I mean, on, on Hollywood, I think Melon really performed really well there too but i think foos coming in in the sombra at the end was also so influential it, it's it's so hard for me to pick one like do you do you have a preference uh i i think both did absolutely incredible i would it's and it's so tough like both were so good with their respective plays at their respective moments but 
in terms of just like pure prowess, I'd have to give it to Melon because he came up clutch in so many situations. Yeah, I, I would have to agree as well. But barely, in my opinion. I It's so close, I agree. I, I would give three MVPs right now if I could. Yep, agreed. As we do manage oh, to steal away, welcome, Melon. Congratulations on your win and match MVP. How are you doing tonight? Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm doing well. How about you? <laughs> I, I mean, we're doing excellent here on the Especially broadcasting after the desk. Timberwolves win. Let me oh, tell yeah. you, we're we're feeling great. <laughs> true, true. Anyways, so Melon, first off, congratulations on your win over the Farmington Fishermen, three to one. Secondly, talk to me a little bit about this map, um, and or all these maps, and like how it went for you guys. Um, I think the main thing that we came to realize after first map Li Zhang is that we just have to be the ones to take the engage. Like we can't be so passive, and on and obviously on Hollywood we started doing that, and we just won every fight after once we got the third point Hollywood on defense. And honestly, I think that just kind of was the best change we made so if i can ask who on the team really was vocal and like wanted to make that switch and like again what players i we know you were but like what players um, would really highlight being de uh, detrimental in that switch uh yak and nutty definitely were ones who were just like we ca we have to actually call we're doing we have to <laughs> not be so passive yeah i also have a question in in previous matches Usually, when you guys are playing dive, I've I've seen a lot more Winston from you guys. What made you guys decide to swap to the Doom Fist now? Um, I think it's more of Yak's comfort pick, to be honest. I think if we ever do play Winston, it's usually gonna be me in a map, just because that's my comfort hero, and I understand Yak. Um, what's the word? Yak doesn't is his favorite role is not tank, but that's okay. <laughs> He he has a really good doom, and I think that I think once we realize that we can play kind of a brawly style against the Farmington fishermen, then we could then I think doom would just be the best pick. Yeah. Now talk to me a little bit about your experience with the league so far. Obviously, you are a rookie coming into this season. So how have you been gelling with your team, and how have you been enjoying the experience? Oh, I've been actually enjoying it quite a lot. This is my first time actually doing anything in a team environment for Overwatch, which honestly, ever since like I was probably eight years old playing TF2, I've always wanted to play on a team, even if it was just for fun. Like I, I just love being competitive. And honestly, this is, I'm glad I got a really good team. They're all very vocal and I like, and I very much like them. All right, Fire, you got any more questions before we move into El Clasico? I mean, we we can move into it right now. But All uh... righty. So, um, Melling, congratulations on match MVP. If you were not match MVP, who would be this map? Oh, Foost. Okay. Great, I may be great biased. Challenge. Great challenge. I may be biased, but he's, <laughs> he's better than me. <laughs> At least on hey. DPS. But he, you're looking you're like looking him. insane on DPS though, I'm not gonna lie. Thank you, thank you. I try, I try. Some of those off angles that you took on Hollywood and I, even on the flashpoint, it was I mean you were doing great as well, don't sell yourself short, right? Yeah. My joke was Yoda couldn't get a blade through you. <laughs> oh yeah. He got one. He got one. Yeah. Uh, I may have wasted lethal, clock. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, well, Melon, congratulations on your win over the Farmington Fisherman, 3-2-1, and that will be about all for us on the desk, so Fire, do you want to close us out for tonight? I mean, sure. I mean, yeah, this is first, uh, my first uh, prod, but I had a good time, and I, this was a great match to watch. I mean, I hope everyone else in chat also enjoyed watching this. It was a little delayed, but we got it. We got it done. We're here. Um, I mean, thank you guys for watching. Uh, we'll be well. We'll be around on Wednesday, right, for the next match.
Yes, we'll be around on Wednesday for the San Antonio Stinkers versus the Lumilies. So thank you very much for watching. This was Fire and War on the casting desk, as well as Ninja Drew behind the scenes on Prod, providing you with every single beautiful image you see on your screen right now. So thank you very much, and we'll see you next time on Aurora Esports.